What exactly is Ethereum? Is it going to take over Bitcoin? Is it a great investment opportunity? Welcome back everyone, Nathan here and in this video we're going to look at the past, the present and the future of Ethereum, the world's second biggest cryptocurrency. The past. You will learn what exactly Ethereum is and why it was created. The present. Where is Ethereum right now? Is anybody actually even using it? And this part of the video just might shock you. And the future. As this channel is about money and investing, we're going to take a look at if Ethereum is a good investment opportunity. As Ethereum 2.0 is coming very soon. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button. It's just about here. That would be much appreciated. Okay, sit back, relax. Here is the past, the present, and the future of Ethereum. Ethereum was created in 2014 by Russian developer Vitalik Buterin, amazingly when he was only 20 years old. A fun fact, Vitalik was also the creator behind BitTorrent, the popular file sharing software. BitTorrent was arguably the first decentralized application ever created. It's also important to point out that Ethereum followed on from Bitcoin, which was the first digital currency to be launched on a blockchain. Without Bitcoin, there probably would never have been Ethereum. The easiest and simplest way to understand Ethereum is this. Ethereum is like the internet. It's just a big computer network where other companies can build their applications on. For example, with the internet, there is the Gmail app for emails, the YouTube app for videos, and Instagram for photos. Ethereum is also just a network where companies can build decentralized apps. Decentralized apps are also known as dApps, and that's basically Ethereum. Simple. Let's listen to the founder Vitalik explain Ethereum in his own words. Thanks to the power of modern communication, we have the ability to create technologies that are decentralized, removing middlemen and allowing users to interact with each other directly through a global network. Decentralized applications have been becoming more and more important in the past 10 years and have the benefits of massively reducing costs and barriers to entry, removing single points of failure, preventing censorship, and ensuring transparency and trust. Decentralized applications for finance, uh, cloud computing, mes messaging, and distributed governance are soon to come. Ethereum is a platform that is specifically designed for people to build these kinds of decentralized applications, or dApps for short. The Ethereum client which we are calling the Ether Browser, will include a built-in peer-to-peer network for sending messages, and a generalized blockchain with a built-in programming language, allowing people to use the blockchain for any kind of decentralized application that they want to create. Ethereum can be used to build financial applications that are fully trustworthy and transparent because they run on the blockchain, online, cryptographically secure systems for managing your property and contracts, social networking and messaging systems that allow users to maintain control of their own data, systems for trading underutilized computational resources like CPU time and hard drive space, and eventually tools for online voting and distributed governance. And the most exciting applications of Ethereum are probably the ones that we have not even thought of. So what is decentralized? Well, let's take currency as an example. In a centralized system, all transactions go through a central point, the bank. In a decentralized system, the middleman is always removed and people operate 
peer-to-peer. -peer. And what is Ether? Well, to run a network, it's very expensive. So all the companies on the network will use Ether as the currency that powers the network. So let's take a look at Ethereum today. This is a chart of Ethereum's price over the last few years, and you can see it's actually highly correlated with Bitcoin. So it also ran up to over a thousand dollars and then came crashing down all the way below a hundred, then up to 300, back down to a hundred. So you can see like Bitcoin, it's very volatile. So we're now looking at the top 100 cryptocurrencies by market capitalization. So you can see number one is Bitcoin and it's worth about 170 billion. Ethereum is sitting at number two, nearly 30 billion. We've got Tether at number three, which is close to 10 billion, then Ripple uh, and so forth. So this is the top 100 cryptocurrencies in the world right now. And there's actually 5,700 projects and more being added every single month. So you may or may not have seen this chart before, but there's a couple of things I wanna point out. So notice the third biggest crypto is Tether. We've got the ninth biggest in the world is Binance, the 10th crypto.com, number 12 Chainlink. So I'm now gonna show you something which I don't think you've seen before. So instead of looking at the top cryptocurrencies, we're gonna look at the top 100 tokens and you'll notice all the tokens have to run on a network so we saw tether which was the third biggest crypto it actually runs on ethereum crypto.com runs on ethereum chainlink runs on ethereum and so on and so on in fact when we look down the top 100 tokens look how many are choosing to use Ethereum as their platform of choice. It's nearly all of them. Now, as an investor, this is really important, guys. So let's take a look at what a decentralized future looks like. Remember, it always involves the middleman being removed. So in this case, with transactions going through a bank, it gets removed and people operate peer to peer. Now let's look at some other use cases. We know currency, where the middleman is the bank, gets removed and it runs more efficiently. It's now happening to gold. So gold is being tokenized and you can own it without even having to take delivery of gold. Charity. Unfortunately, up to 25% of donations with charities get lost with middlemen within the organization. This can be completely eliminated with blockchain. Voting. As much as I'd like to think that all the votes get counted for perfectly, unfortunately there is human error but voting could be dramatically improved. And property. Property is notorious for taking months and months and months to go through. We can now use smart contracts and transfer ownership within seconds. In fact, over the next 10 years, all the industries are gonna get disrupted by decentralization and the blockchain. Now let's talk about something that's coming, Ethereum 2.0. First up, we have a problem. Ethereum at its current level can only process 15 TPS, which is transactions per second. Now to put this in perspective, Visa and MasterCard are able to process 24,000 TPS, transactions per second. So Ethereum has 
at its current level a big scaling issue. It currently runs on a protocol called Proof of Work, and it will be upgrading to a new protocol called Proof of Stake. So let's take a look at a quick overview of both. Proof of Work. Proof of Work is the protocol that Bitcoin and Ethereum currently use. It uses miners and energy. A miner uses their computer to solve a cryptographic puzzle in order to place the next block in the blockchain. When they do, they are rewarded by the network and paid in the network's currency. The problem arising is that there's now large companies building huge mining farms, which not only is using an incredibly high amount of energy, but it's also making the system more centralized. Proof of stake. So instead of miners and energy mining the blocks into existence with proof of stake, selected validators are chosen and they commit stake, which is basically the network's currency. And when a successful block is validated, they get paid from the stake that's been committed. Now with proof of work, it was able to generate 15 transactions per second. And with the new Ethereum 2.0 proof of stake, they're gonna be able to generate up to 100,000 transactions per second. So now you know who created Ethereum, why it was created and exactly how it works. The question now is, is Ethereum a good investment opportunity? Well, when you combine all of the applications that have chosen to build their business on Ethereum, and then you combine that with Ethereum 2.0 that's getting rolled out over the next one to two years, I personally think, yes, it is a good opportunity. And I have personally invested in Ethereum. I will be doing a whole video on exactly how to buy Ethereum and cryptocurrency. That will go over all the different wallets that you can use. It can go over all the different places where you can buy it. But for now, if you just want somewhere today that is safe and secure, the company I'm always happy to recommend is called Coinbase. It's one of the largest exchanges out there with over 35 million customers. I am affiliated with the company and that's because it's a company that I know, like and trust and have used before. If you wanna get signed up, there's a link below in the description where you can get $10 of free Bitcoin when you invest over $100 with Coinbase. This is Crypto Week, so I do have another video coming out shortly in a couple of days on cryptocurrency itself. For right now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click that like button um, if you want to keep learning about money and investing, then be sure to subscribe and tell me what do you think about Ethereum? Do you think it's got potential? Have you invested it in yourself? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. All right. Cheers, guys.